Hey guys, welcome back to Range of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is our two-stick parachute cord survival shelter. This is a great trick to employ out in the woods, especially if we have a minimal kit, such as a cutting tool and paracord, but it's also a great shelter to use because we can still take the paracord away from our shelter, use it for other tasks, and then come back to our shelter location, string it back up, and have our shelter ready to go. And the first thing we're gonna need is two sticks. Now there are two tricks with this type of shelter. To make it a lot easier on ourselves, we need to find two sticks that are roughly a foot or two longer than we are tall. And those two sticks need to be as straight as possible. Hard to find straight lines in nature, but it's gonna help us on the back end finding two straight sticks. The material we've harvested off the landscape with our small bush knife or parang is mature grapevine. It grows all over this area. Varying diameters. The diameter that we're going to need has got to be about an inch or two inches somewhere in between and then remembering the length a foot or two taller than we are and as straight as possible. Because the grapevine is a great material to work with, not only is it extremely flexible, but it is also extremely strong. So we can use it for this type of shelter. Now when we get our grapevine together, we move to our campsite or our shelter site, we drop our kit, and we're gonna pull out our paracord, and we're just going to shear lash both ends. We start at the top and shear lash. We wanna make sure those are side by side as best as possible as we lash creating our wraps and fraps and finishing off with a clove hitch. Once we're done with the top end, we can move to the other end and shear lash once again. One thing we did that may come into play as we set up our shelter is as we created our fraps after our wraps at the top end, we crossed the sticks almost in a diagonal lash fashion. That's gonna make it somewhat uncomfortable later on once we actually establish this shelter because it will affect the head area of where we're gonna rest our head or the pillow area. We wanna shear lash these together as straight as possible and not cross them as we wrap. A very helpful technique to make our lives even more easy is to fashion two tent stakes out of just material around the area that we're gonna to use to help hold our structure together and actually put it together to make it easier on us as we use our paracord for the shelter. Now we're gonna use these tent stakes to hold open our shelter. What we're gonna do is plant one tent stake in between those vines, hammer it into the ground as best as possible with our mallet or baton, and then move to that second vine, pull it away from the first one, creating an oval shape, and then hammer in that second stake to keep the shelter open. With our shelter held open by our two tent stakes, we're going to start at what's going to be the head end of our shelter and work to the foot end with the remaining paracord we have as part of our kit. You'll notice that the vines are crossed at the head end, which may give us a little bit of discomfort later when we actually establish the shelter, and you'll see that here shortly. But what we're going to do is start with our paracord, create an arbor knot or jam knot around one vine, and once it's secure, we're just going to weave back and forth over and under these two vines close with our paracord to give us a head section or a pillow or a rest area for our head as part of our shelter as we use paracord. Notice how the beginning of our weave at the top of what is our shelter is very close together. That's because this is where our head's gonna go. That way we have somewhat of a structure there to support our head while we're in our shelter to help make it a more comfortable shelter to get some rest at night. From here, we're gonna take the remainder of our paracord and lashing it to one vine. We're gonna continue our weave, only spreading out the weave this time for a few inches or so. And we're going to wrap twice now around each vine. The reason we wrap twice is to create just some sort of bite with the cordage around the vine to prevent that cordage from slipping too much or moving up and down the vine or pulling too tightly or creating too much slack in certain areas, giving us an even spread of paracord. That way we have an even shelter that we can lay on and it will support our body weight, giving us a comfortable night's sleep without falling through or being too uncomfortable in certain areas. 
We want to safeguard this cordage as much as possible, which is why we've only cut it one or two times thus far. We're going to cut it now to cut it directly in half with the remaining cordage we have to create two suspension lines for our shelter. We're going to be able to pull off a lot of this cordage and reuse it for other survival tasks. So we're going to use the remainder of our cordage for those suspension lines. And we're going to use our lighter to burn in the ends to safeguard it even more to prevent it from fraying so we have that extra length. With that remaining paracord, we have two lengths of equal size. We're just going to find the middle of each length, put it in between the vines and around the fraps and wraps, create a simple lark's head, and now we have our suspension lines ready to go. We are ready to string up our shelter. We pick it up out of the stakes, rotate 90 degrees, and then with our suspension lines, we grab those that we've created and wrap around the tree in basically what is a tensionless anchor and then tie it out front with a non-slip knot. When we pick the shelter up, the cordage may slip or move and it's gonna look like a rat's nest, but we will take care of that here in a second and square it away to make it look pretty so we can actually lay down in our shelter. We grab the suspension line on the other end of the foot end of our shelter and do the same thing around our far anchor point, a tensionless anchor knot with our paracord and then tie it in place with a non-slip knot and now we can actually test it out to make sure it won't slip. We're just going to apply a little bit of body weight holding the vines together to see if everything's going to hold in place for us long enough to lay down. All right, now that our shelter is somewhat of a rat's nest with that paracord, this is the time, now that we know that it will take our weight to dress the knots, to dress the paracord, dress all the line to make sure it's squared away, good enough for our shelter, and then if we need to take any paracord, we can do so at this time with the slack left over. If you couldn't tell by now, we're making just a very simple parachute cord hammock with some vine from the area. Very simple. A technique to climb into this hammock is to leave a large enough weave in between the paracord and the vine that we have for our hammock, climb up from underneath and then simply push the vine down below the waist, sit down on the paracord with your fourth point of contact and then slowly climb in one leg at a time to our parachute cord hammock and lean back and then finally enjoy that hammock to get that convective breeze and get a good night's sleep. Now the benefits of a shelter like this is one, if we have minimal equipment with us, like a hundred feet of paracord and some sort of cutting tool, we can actually construct this fairly easy. There are variations of this type of shelter, but this gives us the ability to string this type of shelter up in between two anchor points that may be far apart and still give us the benefit of having a hammock. Plus we get that convective breeze blowing underneath, especially in hotter environments. It's still in the 90s during the day around this area. So this is a great shelter. Plus there's no rainfall expected for the next few days. But we can also take cordage from this shelter to use for other tasks, making it very easy for us to come back, reapply that cordage and still have a shelter once we're done with whatever else we're using that paracord for. With this shelter, it's all too easy to take down as well. We can remove that paracord that was for our headrest area and use it for other things or simply gather it up. But when we're done with this shelter, it's too easy just to collect up the paracord and we minimize the cutting, which means we have several different lengths of paracord that are still relatively long, viable for us to use while we're still out in the woods for additional survival tasks or if we have to pick up camp and move somewhere else we can take down this shelter very easily after our night's sleep and grab up all our resources minus the vine and move out to our next campsite all right guys a change in format for this video just a basic single skill with some knots and a creative way to set up a shelter out in the field, especially for bushcraft or survival, and especially for minimalists, if all we have with us is a cutting tool and some cordage or enough cordage to string up a shelter like this. We could always use more vine, and we could always use less cordage or find different ways or variations to string up the shelter based off our resources and based off the situation. But I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.